Alright, how goes it guys? It's Wombat, and today we're back with another review on the fourth Beyblade in the Beyblade Burst Chozy series, and the price of all Random Booster 10, Crash Ragnarok 11 Reach Wedge. So, um, yeah, this Beyblade was originally released in, uh, as the prize of Random Booster 10, which in itself is also a pretty good Random Booster. It has a bunch of top tier parts like Atomic, Zero, Seven, a bunch of other stuff that was like top tier competitive at the time, so it was, at the time it was worth buying the whole set. Uh, but overall it's a pretty, it's a pretty interesting Beyblade and I'm, I've been looking forward to doing this review because Crash Ragnarok is one of my favorite, uh, Chozy layers. So let's start with the layer first. Um, I think it is 19.4 grams, I only remember that because it's the same weight, official weight, as uh, Winning Valkyrie. I think mine might actually be a little lighter than that, but I'm not sure. Um, aside from the Random Booster, it's been re-released once in the uh, Chozy customized set. It's like a whitish gray color instead of orange. Uh, but So this layer is pretty much a direct upgrade over... Uh, Blaze Ragnarok, which it looks pretty much like. It's basically Blaze Ragnarok with metal. And Blaze Ragnarok was already a better Dark Death Scyther, so this is um, also pretty good. It's got some nice stamina. It's got about the same amount of stamina as Archer Hercules does. Uh, it also has... I'm not really sure where the attack comes from, but it will land like random critical hits on things sometimes. I think it's either like these contact points, but I'm not really sure how because they're pretty like obstructed by this thing in front of it. Or it might be this part here, but that seems too blunt to really deliver the random like hard hits it does. So I'm not really sure where all the attack comes from, but it'll occasionally like land random critical hits and burst and KO things. Um, but because aside from that, it looks pretty smooth. Uh, the one downside to this layer, though, is that its teeth are pretty awful, as you can see. They're almost flat. So, um, the combo that was originally Mana came up with a Crash Ragnarok on Hunter or Jolt combo, which was basically like a one-hit KO glass cannon. If you couldn't knock out or burst the opponent in the first few hits, you would self-burst and lose. But he found it to be a pretty effective attack type. So I was like, okay, what if I took this and made it into something uh, a little bit more applicable outside of attack, and then I put it on uh, destroy. I had to use my destroy with a tighter spring. So I used uh, Crash Ragnarok, Zero Crawls, Destroy. I'm going to make a, vid a video about that one day, because it doesn't get the recognition I think it deserves. Or Crash Ragnarok itself is only kind of getting recognition now that... The recognition it deserves now that the dash drivers are out. But, uh, yeah, basically that combo was able to, at the time Crash Ragnar was first released, it was like my anti-good person combo. It could burst Deep Chaos and Revolve and Bearing, could burst Emperor Fornius Bearing, it could outspin Drain Fafnir on Atomic and destroy, provided Fafnir wasn't using Polish. Um, it could beat most attack types if you were able to launch correctly to dodge them. And, yeah, other stuff too. So, it was, it's a pretty versatile layer. It's kind of risky to use just because, like, aside from left spin atomic, none of its matchups are really guaranteed wins. That's just the risk of using right spin destroy. Uh, and more recently, people have started using Zephyr Dash on it and destroy dash and hunter dash just because the tighter spring will overcompensate for Crash Ragnarok's bad teeth and those definitely help it out and make it uh in my opinion I think it's a top tier layer right now uh just because of its mix of like attack and stamina but yeah overall a uh, good layer highly underrated I think uh definitely worth picking up in some capacity. And then the disc is 11. It, I 
personally, I found it, it kind of um, disappointing to see Eleven reprinted so quickly. Like, I don't even think it was a month after Z Achilles was first released that they remade Eleven for this booster, but it's whatever. I feel like a lot of Chozy is just reusing existing discs, and there's been like... Well, maybe not. There's been, uh... I guess Zenith, but whatever. Um, Eleven, I've already gone over this pretty recently. It's basically Knuckle, but uh, without a frame, but Knuckle is kind of outclassed. And it might not even be legal in Burst Classic where Knuckle could be used, so probably not worth getting. Reach is an interesting frame. Um, If I can maybe get it off the disc, I can show you it. Uh, so it's got six spikes on it that uh, point right or clockwise. So it's good for right spin attack. Um, some people were using it on bearing also, or just for life after death. And I can kind of see how it's got the smooth underside, but I think it would perform kind of like Glaive in that aspect, where the, uh, the points ruin any life after death it might have even though it looks kind of smooth otherwise. Um, but Mana also liked using Reach on his Crash Ragnarok combo. I know Common Pickle also used Reach on a Crash Ragnarok attack combo. Yami used it on AC Bearing, which I'm not sure I really agree with, but it worked well enough for him. Uh, yeah, it's good for um, right spin attack just because of these points. Just on the off chance they do hit something, they are pretty aggressive. Um, I'm not sure if it's better than Meteor or Star or not. Uh, I feel like it's probably better than Meteor. And then either way, I think it might be outclassed by Turn, but I guess an advantage that Turn has that Reach doesn't is that Turn hangs down really low on the disc, so it has a worse chance of a better chance of scraping than Reach does. So. Reach still might be useful for that, otherwise it's like, it's not a very common frame to use. People will use, it looks kind of like flow as well, people will use flow for stamina. Um, most people will use turn or bump or something else for attack, vortex, dagger, depending on what layer they're using. There isn't really like a, I guess you could say reach is three-sided because there's six points and six is divisible by three, in which case Vortex would work better, but I honestly don't know. Reach is just, it's a frame that doesn't see much use. Don't know a ton about it. It's okay for attack. That's about it. And then finally, uh, the driver is Wedge, which was, uh, it was used like in two tournaments ever pretty much. And it was successful in those two tournaments, and no one has ever used it again for some reason. Um, just because, like... So, Sniper used Spriggan Requiem, I think, Yell Wedge. Because he told me about some weird synergy between Yell and Wedge that was going on. Uh, I still need to test that out. I think I looked at it once and didn't think it was that great. But then he went 10-0 and won, a won like the biggest North American tournament with that combo, or the second biggest, so, I, I don't know, Wedge is probably good, and then some guy in California, Epic Turtwig, I think he got like, second or third in two tournaments using Spriggan Requiem on Wedge also, even though those tournaments were just like, they weren't run cor correctly, but he still won the matches with it, so it's probably worth something. Um, Honestly, unless you can make it stall, kind of like Metal Flat can. It's kind of like a a Metal Survive. A Wolborg Metal Survive. Where it's got like the cone shape and a small point at the end. Um, some people have been able to stall it, which will give it more stamina, I suppose, because it'll be kind of like Metal Flat or Iron. Um... And then it could also be used for stationary attack, I guess. But it doesn't seem like it would be very good in opposite spin unless Yell randomly makes it good at that. Uh, which Sniper was saying it does. 
But either way, it's kind of like a another one of those underused, I'm not sure if it's really underrated. I, I don't think it would be very good against something like Burying or Extend Bless or Atomic or even something like Destroy or Revolve, but it really needs more testing because the two times it's been used in the tournament successfully, it did pretty well, and it just hasn't been used since then, so... Maybe some, maybe through like a weird mixed attack thing, like if there was like a wedge dash, I could say maybe Dead Hades on wedge dash doing pretty well. And actually, oh, someone used Stock Crash Ragnarok as like a weird stall or stationary attack hybrid once, but I don't know. It seems like it could be useful in some capacity. I've said that twice in one video. Well. Uh, but overall, I don't know how much, like, a confirmed Crash Ragnarok goes for nowadays. I'd say probably somewhere between 40 and $60. I'm not sure if it's worth getting for that. Um, you may be better off getting the Chosy customized set for uh, Outer and Chosy Spriggan and Wall. As well as, like, Zero, and I think it comes with other discs that are good, too. Outer uh, and across, and it also comes with Crash Ragnarok. Um, unless you really want Wedge, I think it's been released with like Screw Trident and also that one uh, Twin Nemesis from Random Booster 12. But the two ways to get Crash Ragnarok are in the Random Booster, which you might want to pick up the full set because it also comes with a bunch of other. Parts that may not be top tier now, but are still really good. And if Burst Limited ever becomes a thing, which is which would be like the God Layer series limited, not the dual layer and single layer series, uh, they would be top tier for that. You get like Sea Excalibur, Legend Spriggan, um, Lost Longinus, I forget what else, but yeah, it could be good for that. So the whole random booster set might be worth a buy, or the Chosy customized set. Either way, I'd say at this point in time, with the dash drivers making things like Crash Ragnarok and Dead Hades viable top tier layers, I'd say Crash Ragnarok is definitely worth a purchase at this point. In some capacity, I'll say it a third time, we already said it twice. So, uh, next up is... The gift from our, our Lord and Savior's Anki to himself, our boy, Buddy Longinus. So I will see you guys then.